Once a black person gets more than, say, $5 million, your name goes on a list, a mm-hmm. governmental list. Mm-hmm. And they know who you are. Again, again, I can't, I can't verify that. I can't prove that. But mm-hmm. I was told that. Yeah, that I believe that. I'm not going to lie because um, they, I, I believe the reason why something like that will be important for the government is because they want to watch what you do with that money. And how you Absolutely. use it. Because if, if, if you go out and let other black people know that you have money, that's almost automatically a way to get a following, right? Absolutely. And then if you get a following, now is what are you about to do with that following? You're gonna be competition. You can you can you can you can you can basically obstruct what they're trying to, mm-hmm. to do. Of course. Now, again, that's just my theory. Now, if you notice all of I won't say all, but a, a vast majority of the black people in this country that have hundreds of millions are athletes and entertainers, if you mm-hmm. notice that. Not the business class, mm-hmm. but the athletes and entertainers, which can't, you know, money is money, but it's how you make the money. Because mm-hmm. an athlete is really just a high paid employee. Right. Because once he stops playing, the check stops. Mm-hmm. Now, you made a lot of money over your career, no question about it. Mm-hmm. You know, LeBron, James, Michael, you know, whoever it is, they made. You know, hundreds of millions, you know, a lot of money, but it was a paycheck. Mm-hmm. Own, I imagine now, if LeBron James made a, a billion dollars from playing basketball, how much the owner of the team made. Right. But he's a high paid employee. So now, by the fact that he has public visibility, now what does that do? That shifts attention from, quote, the business class to the, quote, athletic class. So mm-hmm. now you see people abandoning going to law school, business school, uh, you know, again, trying to be athletes, which, okay, nothing wrong with playing basketball, football, you know, whatever sport it is you want to play. But mm-hmm. in the long run, that's not a long-term career for the majority of people. Right. I mean, what, only the top 1% or 1% make it into the NFL or, you know, professional sports. Mm-hmm. But now you take a lawyer's career, a lawyer's career could be 30 to 40 years. The average professional athlete's career is only three to four years. Mm-hmm. Again, you got the exceptions, but on average, it's, I think it's under five years yeah. that you have to make all of your money. The, the average lawyer will be making money 30 years out. Right. Now, which is more valuable? Now, which is more, obviously, the law degree is more valuable than a professional, you know, a career in professional sports. Mm-hmm. But which, but which profession gets all the emphasis? Yeah, Can you name a black yeah. businessman that's taken a company IPO in the last five years and won? Let's see. IPO. Did uh, Candidly, uh, Calendly, the calendar company, did they IPO? I don't think they did, actually. I, I don't think they did either. I think yeah, they were bought I out. I don't, I don't yeah, think yeah, they yeah. IPO. They got a massive investment, but I don't think they actually IPO. Uh, let me see. Can I think of one? I, I'm, I'm heavy in the black business space, so I think if anybody can answer that, I should be able to answer it. But I'm actually thinking, I don't think, if, I don't think there's any. Not that I could remember right now. Normally, they sell before that IPO point. Right. Yeah. You get bought out. You know, your private equity or venture capital, whatever it is, they're going to buy the company. If the company is successful, mm-hmm. they're going to buy it out fold it into their company and you know, take it to do whatever they want. So, but name five NBA basketball players. Oh yeah, easy. Name five NFL mm. <laughs> football players. I mean, you you can go on and on. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's interesting though. Let me, can we, let's pivot a little bit from your case and you do have an interesting case and we would definitely make sure the awareness is there, but you have a special set of knowledge, right? Right. So can we get into it a little bit? Now, sure. what's your take on the people who feel like black businesses or black business people should start their businesses with the exit in mind? Because a lot of them, like you just said, are exiting before IPO. And we are not having these IPOs. And I can specifically name one, Sundial Brands. That's the owner of Shea Moisture. They, they got massive in the um, skincare, hair care, all that. They got massive and then they sold to Unilever for whatever, 1.2 billion, whatever. It was a large number for sure for him. But right. what do you think uh, an IPO would have done versus what he did? Or, or what, okay. do you, what is your take on exiting before IPO versus IPO? Okay, I'm gonna... It's the difference between being rich and the difference between being wealthy. Okay. IPO is generational wealth. 
Yeah. Like you could be rich. I mean, rich can be two hundred million dollars. That's a lot of money now. I mean, I'm not gonna mm -hmm. discount a couple hundred million, but two billion is even more. It is twenty billion. Okay, for instance, take Nike. Mm -hmm. Phil Knight, the owner, or at least the majority owner of Nike, mm -hmm. is worth more than all you know, all black professional athletes, and they built Nike. Yeah. Put them all together. That one single person is worth more than all of them combined. Mm -hmm. Now he's wealthy and they are rich. Mm -hmm. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. He owns shares in Nike. Means that he can pass those shares on to his kids, grandkids, great grandkids, great, 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 grand, you know what I mean? On and on and on. That's generational wealth. That money's gonna be passed on through the Nike family trust and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. But once a professional athlete stopped playing, his, his paycheck stops. Phil Knight's dividend. As a matter of fact, I saw something was last week. Steve Ballmer, which is one of the people that uh, started Microsoft mm -hmm. with uh, Bill Gates, right? Mm -hmm. His dividends on his Microsoft stock is over a billion dollars every year. Just oh, the God. dividend. Hmm. And that's in perpetuity, which means what? That'll right. never stop. Yeah. That's forever. A mm -hmm. big, imagine now. A billion just from your dividend. Mm -hmm. A billion, a billion dollars just mm -hmm. off dividends on your stock. That's yeah. a check in the mail every month. You know, eighty-eight million dollars yeah. in perpetuity. I mean, how, how can you comprehend that? He doesn't even. I mean, how can you comprehend that? Yeah, that's what he playing around with. It went and bought the Clippers, bought him a new stadium. Right. It's just play money to him because it's play money. Right, it's play. Yeah. I saw his net worth is a hundred and. Either fifty-seven or one hundred and seventy-five billion. Mm. Mm -mm. Now, so that's wealth again. Being rich is LeBron James. Mm -hmm. That's he's rich. Obviously, you know he's worth whatever a billion plus. Or Jay Z is worth, you know, billions, whatever. But he's rich. Mm -hmm. Jay Z once he stopped rapping, where's the money? When Beyonce stops dancing. Stop going on the concert tours. Where's the money come from? Now, she may get royalties from her music, obviously. Mm -hmm. But that's so keep her rich, not make her wealthy. Right. So, you would, I mean, I would ask myself, you say, okay, Jay-Z, Beyonce, why don't you start a company? You don't need anybody. You are, you're the star. Mm -hmm. Have the company bring in other talent. Promote that talent. Now you're generating wealth. Because at some point, you're going to have to stop dancing. You're not going to be able to tour at you know, 50 years old, 55, you know, whatever. You're going to be, you know, late, you know it's going to be over for you. Mm -hmm. But the company can, again, continue in perpetuity. It's like the Fords. Look at uh, the Rockefellers. Mm -hmm. John D. Rockefeller was worth a billion dollars in 1900 before there was no federal income tax. Imagine that now. A billionaire in 1900 with right. no federal income tax. Mm -hmm would be worth how much now? How much do you think that billion is worth now? That's a ridiculous number. Probably a hundred billion or, or more. Yeah. Again, that's generational wealth. Mm -hmm. Very few blacks that I'm aware of have any generational wealth. Again, there, there may be a few, but there's probably generational rich, but not generational wealth because you don't get wealthy by working, right. by doing labor. Mm -hmm. Your money has to make money for you to become wealthy. And the way you make money off of money is via the capital markets. Mm -hmm. Your IPOs via capital market processes. Mm -hmm. Capital market processes are raising money, deploying capital in ventures. Mm 